Good morning, Days with Jordan the Lion. We're at it early today. Went to take Jaw. He has to get his uh, rabies shot and some other shots. So he's going to the vet, and I wanted to get it out of the way early. Um, he doesn't have to go very often, but he doesn't really like it when he goes, so I'm not looking forward to this. But I hope you guys enjoyed yesterday's vlog. I know it was a long one. It was a pain to edit, and it wouldn't all go up as one. It was originally 74 minutes, but it just wouldn't post for some reason. I don't know. It would only let me do like about 30 minutes worth, so I kept trying to edit it, taking stuff out. That wouldn't work. Then finally I just had to make it two videos, so hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you. You look so nice. He couldn't be more ready to leave now. Had to get the anal gland squeezed. Um, much like in my own life, I like to keep things exciting, unique, and interesting. When I take Jaw to a vet, his vet looks like Confucius, and that's the guy that had to squeeze his anal glands because he was scooting around the floor. So, not a fun job, but if you're going to have somebody do it, you better have somebody that looks like Confucius. Well, John and I are back from the vet, and I had to change shirts. People that watch me and watch Adam the Woo, uh, on Adam the Woo's vlog this morning, he's back in Hollywood today for a little vacation and vlogging. So, he was pretty much in my stomping grounds pretty much up and down my street yesterday and I didn't even notice. I didn't go up and down there much yesterday, so. Bummer, maybe we'll see him while we're running errands today. Got a pretty cool place I'm gonna show you and I gotta hit the store to get some uh, treats for the Joster. Let's have fun. We were gonna go to the park and then it, when I got in my car there were sprinkles and then nothing's happened. So, like I said, John and I are gonna just go buy some treats and go for a long walk. But it's a nice overcast day. I don't mind that at all. Getting a little tired of seeing those cranes though, to be honest with you. Mission accomplished on the dog treats. Well, we're over here on Grace Avenue again today. Kind of the start of Whitley Heights and I actually used to live right around the corner from this place. Um, I had walked past it so many times and you could just tell by looking at it how old it is. It's like a Spanish built building. And I didn't want to look it up because I felt like that kind of takes some of the fun out of it. And sure enough, was I right. A week later, it's popped up in my studies and it's a pretty interesting story. I'm going to tell it to you from over here and then I'm going to go and I'm going to give you a view of the fountain inside. This is called the El Cabrillo. And a few of the interesting things about it are, are that what originally, where it originally came into my mind was I was reading up on Valentino and uh, when I did the Valentino vlog and uh, they said that Valentino used to love this place and used it for some of his sets for some of his movies. So I immediately got excited because of the Spanish architecture and then they've got like a Moorish fountain on the inside that you'll see when we go over there. Um, I got excited and then I started reading up on it and there's some things that just don't jive with me. One of them being that they say Cecil B. DeMille had this built. One of the theories is that it was as a gift for his daughter, but more reliably, they believe that this was um, a place that he built. He was flying over Broadway actors from New York to be in his pictures, and he would put them up here. Now, the problem is, is that they say that this was built in 1928, and in three different articles that I read, they all say that Valentino had filmed and used this as part of his sets, but Valentino died in 1926. And including, even in the same article that I read about this being built by Cecil B. DeMille in 28, they also said in there that Valentino had used it for a set. I don't know how that's possible if he was already dead for two years. Now here's the other notable stuff about this building. In the 1980s, it was pretty much squalor, but Divine lived here, and Divine was the star of a lot of the John Waters movies. You'll probably remember her most uh, notoriously for Pink Flamingos, but she starred in like Polyester and a few of his movies, and uh, this and was one of the early transvestites in the public eye. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, this is where Divine lived in the 80s. And then in 1984, a guy named Kent Warner uh, lived here and he passed away. Now here's the crazy thing about Kent Warner. Kent Warner was a wardrobist, like a costumer for different studios, but he was also a motion picture uh, prop collector. When he died, they cleaned out his apartment and apparently his family never came and claimed any of his stuff. So it sat down in the basement and eventually the owner in 1984 just threw his stuff away. What they found out later was that amongst the things that they threw away were James Dean's boots from Rebel Without a Cause and the shot leather jacket that Marlon Brando wore in The Wild Ones. Just the owner unknowingly threw all the stuff away and just didn't know it was in there. So now I'm gonna walk across, uh, raise this up a little bit over the fence since it's, it's a gated, locked up, and I don't wanna get any trespassing charges. Plus, I don't know any codes to get in. I'll at least show you the fountain that they claim that Valentino would have used for some of his movies. As well as, this building was also used for the TV show Chuck. Um, in like 2007, this was like the establishing place where he lived. I, I, they used it for like the first season, maybe even just the first couple of episodes, and they rebuilt the um, the fountain area on a soundstage and used it for the rest of the show. Now let's walk over. This is not a busy street, which is pretty cool. That makes this much easier to give you a better experience. This is called the El Cabrillo. I really wish I could get in there and give you guys a better view of what, what it looks like, but sometimes we gotta take what we can get. And with such a cool story, knowing that Divine lived here and the Kent Warner Association and what was actually what relics of cinema history were housed in the basement of this place and then just trashed, it's kind of mind blowing. And this will actually give you kind of a view of how it's, the architecture is inside. Very, very beautiful place. Very beautiful. And here's some footage of the side of the building so you can kind of see what it looked like from over here. Like the side of the building and how some of the, the old Spanish construction of the doorways and the windows. That guy kind of looked like Groucho Marx. They're trying. They're trying. This used to be our neighborhood Taco Bell, can you tell? We're walking through Thai Town right now. I actually used to live over here. Good food. I had never had Thai food until I moved over here. You know, I walk past this so often, it sometimes completely slips my mind to tell you guys what this is. I thought this was gang tagging Do you from a recognize distance. That it turns sign? out it's just Halloween decorations. <laughs> okay, well, there's a scene in Naked Gun where Frank Drebin leaves his house to go think about some things. And he goes for a walk and gets lost. And here's where he gets lost. Now the shot is actually something like this. You can kind of see the sign and everything. You can see all that with him, and I'll find a still to put in here for you. Yep, a little naked gun scene location for you. We never did get that rain I was hoping for. This is the best part of the night. This is the terror twilight part of the night, so. Oh yeah. 
That sky just keeps getting creepier and creepier. Yeah, buddy. Please like and subscribe to my vlog. And if you want to support the vlog, try Patreon or go buy a shirt, my spread shirt.